Hello, welcome to my channel. One more to fix. Today I will be trying to fix GE profile range and also GE profile microwave. For the range, the broil heating filament is broken. I could still bake cake and bread, but cannot broil anything. For the microwave, it doesn't produce heat anymore. So the power is still getting to the microwave. The table still turns, the light still turns on. It just it doesn't produce any heat anymore. So you put a cup of water in there, hit start. You will see the light, you will see the table still turning, but then you will smell like burning smell. And a quick Google search will tell you that there is something wrong with that magnetron. It's like a unit, a heating unit, magnetron, they said, that the type of device that produced the microwave to heat whatever you put in a microwave. So I think uh, they recommend that you replace that magnetron and also a high voltage diode. So to do that, you need to remove the microwave out of the fixture, basically the cabinets, and look into the removing out of the, removing the microwave, take it down, removing all the sheet metal to get to that magnetron, to get the part number. So instead of doing that, it's just too much work for me. So I did some Google search by looking at, you know, this is GE Profile Space Maker XL 1400. And also, that model number there, a little Google search would tell you what part number to order. So I went to eBay and ordered this. So this is the magnetron. And I think you would want, if you have the similar microwave, you want to order this one that have OM75P10. That's the one. And it came with this high voltage diode. And for the range, again, order from eBay too. This is for the broiling filament, the one on top. I will put the links to the magnetron and the heating filament here in the description so you guys could see. You probably order and try to fix yourself too. You've had this uh, appliances for over 20 years. Still working and I hate to throw them away without uh, trying to fix it. And plus, the two appliances are going to set you back around about uh, 1500 and I'm not in the mood to spend that money yet. So we're not fixing it first. So I'm ready to remove the microwave here. So basically, you know, open the top cabinet and you would see the, in my case here, I have three bolt or screws attaching the top of the microwave to the cabinet there. And then of course you've got to unplug it. And then because we've been using this microwave for a while, there are some oils and stuff, junk, gunk underneath the microwave where the fans are. So I, you know, made this cardboard here and taped to the bottom of it. So when I hold it, touch it, don't have all them gunk you know, transfer to my fingers and then transfer all over the place. So that's how I do it. Now all I need is another person to help me hold it down, unscrew it, remove it down, put it on the island here, and start getting it. By the way, before you tape all up like this, make sure you remove the turntable and the wheels on which the table rests. Remove it out of it so that you don't break it and make it lighter. And I have done all of that. Now 
are just ready to be removed. So this one is an external vented microwave. So we have ductwork here and this ductwork needs to be removed so that we could take the microwave out. I'll show you why. So you have to cut out all the corking, remove all the screws, pull it out. And this thing here, thing here, the lip was inside the ductwork, so it won't slide out. So you have to remove that. So you have a big old hole here to the outside. What I do, cut out a some foam, high density foam here. And duct tape it. Seal the hole so I don't get all the draft coming in. So I'll try to remove it this time. I don't think this one come. I'm not sure. But seems to be a gap here. So I think that one should be able to slide out. Let's see. So funny thing, you know, I was trying to check or look for the part number of this magnetron, you know, on the internet. It took me a while to get to find out what you know part number I need for my particular model of microwave and so when I was removing the top vent you know on top of the microwave above the door there's like a vent type so you remove that and on the side I saw this package and inside that it's got all the parts so replacement part numbers so number one, guess what? Magnetron. That part number WB27X10017. That is the part number of this guy right here. So had I known that, it would have saved me a bit of time. You know, instead of going try to search, look for what part number it is. It's right there in that package. I didn't even know this package existed. So learn something new today. Just want to share with you. So this one is the template at the back and you see it got hooked going up like this like a J hook and you have to really lift it lift the microwave up out of the hook this one I didn't lift it high enough kind of bend it a little bit I think the rest fine just have to clean it up bend this one back try to replace that magnetron and see if it works so I got it off here put on the island some cardboard on top of the island so it doesn't scratch it. It's a bit dirty, but see all them screws here? Go around and remove all of it. Even the bottom. So you could remove out, remove the metal cover here. Get inside to the magnetron. Okay, so remove all the screws, like I said, and then you come down to here. You have the electrical. So the ground there, there's a screw, the green wire to right here, you remove it, and then there's a disconnect there, you disconnect it. So now you could remove the entire cover to get to the inside. It's a little tricky on the vent part, you have to remove the top, you know, where you connect it to the exterior ductwork. So you have to slide it out to the back as well. You have capacitor, and this one is dangerous because it stores electricity. It might shock you. And you see the yellow and red wire coming out there. You need to somehow short it, you know. Try to get a good, yeah, yellow and red there. And another one, I think, if I have black one, yeah. That is your high capacity diode. And 
might, might as well replace that because they shipped the magnetron with that. So I'm going to pull that yellow and red wire out by an insulated middle nose plier, short it out so you kind of take care of that so it doesn't shock you when you try to disassemble the magnetron. So now the microwave is on its back. I have to remove the control panel here to get to one screw so that I could remove this piece here, this metal piece. So this metal piece come out and now I could see that magnetron right there. Unplug it. Remove it, plug it back in, see what happens. So I remove this here from the top here, right here. And then the magnetron is held in place by four nut. I think. Uh, the bolt is 1132 in this right here. Two on top, two in the bottom here. Remove them. Let's see what happens. So the magnetron right here is held together by 8 mil, 8 mil bolt and nuts. So now I remove them, four of them. Couldn't get out because that's not enough clearance. This power supply here is in the way. So now I have to remove the power supply, move it out of the way, remove this, install a new one, and then install this one back in. So as you see, I had to drop the power, the power block, right? And to do that, you have to remove the bottom part of the microwave. This is a nasty dirty sticky job and you can see the difference here this is the old one om75p10 and i think the tip here blue see that focus so, so the tip is blown it's bad i think this is a new one. The one looks good. Oh, it's magnetic, so and it's the same. OM seven five P ten. This guy is OM seven five P ten, right? So this one, it's the old one, bad. This one is a new one. Good. So since I see that the tip of the, this is a good one, right? So the tip of the old magnetron, see, it's so bad like that. So I'm gonna just replace this one and then see if, if it works. I don't know if I need to replace that diode. This guy. I don't know. Should I replace it? I already have it up. I already opened it up. But the thing is, I read online, some people said the new one doesn't work. So, <laughs> I don't know, 50 50 here. So, Magnetron is installed. Back in. Now I have to reinstall the power block. See what happens. See what happens next. Uh, power supply installed. Magnetron installed. You just have to button everything up and should be hopefully finger crossed works. <laughs>
So here's the moment of truth. Put most of everything back except the top vent, which we don't really need it to test it. Plug it in. Got my trusted cup of water here. Bubbly, bubbly. Eh, might as well put, I don't want to break it, so should be enough, just right here. Should work if it works. Boobity, boobity. Moment of truth. Works or not. Two minutes. Okay, it's done. See, hot cup. Oof, very hot. Yeah, it works. It works. So I put on gloves to remove it from the microwave. I have this uh, time tester. I'll show you. Too hot, don't want to destroy it. So put everything back. Took a lot of time cleaning it up. So I test it and it works. So now, now I just want to close it out by testing water in the cup here again. Open it up. See, spent a lot of time cleaning, almost a whole day. Pretty clean. Turn table install cups, a cup with water in, close it out, a minute. Turn table turning, lights on. good so I think the hardest part is cleaning and then here I need to finish up the duct work tomorrow because I had to remove disassemble all the duct work so that you could pull the microwave down and then slide it out otherwise this lip right here got stuck so, remove all the duct work. So tomorrow we're gonna reinstall. And right now I just temporarily put this uh, high density foam in there. So I don't get all the cold air coming in. So that's for tomorrow. Finish that. And then worked on the oven, the range. So for this microwave, $40, no, $60 for the Magnetron. $60 for the Magnetron. And it works. Save me 500 bucks. So, see you later. So, today, trying to finish up the ductwork. So, you see how they did it? Cut a hole here. That. 
So you see, they cut a hole in this box right there, and then they just put it in on top, and then they screw it to the wall, and then they silicone the hell out of it. And I'm thinking to make a better flow, you know. So I improve the hole in the wall here. Initially, there weren't any aluminum foil tape like this and so you have to use straight cut snipper snip the I don't know what you call it flange down a little bit and then you bend it further so that it sits flush against the wall here and then I put this tape on it so there's a smooth surface and also there aren't any holes in between the flange right here the taps because when you vent, you want all the the bed, you know, oil infested air going out through the hole, not into these little holes in the wall here. And I think it could have been done better when they build the house or when they install this vent. So I improved on it. Just put this tape here and it looks pretty flush and smooth. So hopefully the air gonna travel smoother. Yeah. So basically, the main point is to find a positive connection, meaning this box has to be connected to the exterior wall. I cannot just rely on pushing it against the wall and then silicone on the side like, or like originally was done. I couldn't feel satisfied with that. So, so what I'm looking at is a positive connection, like I said. So I align the hole of the box and the exterior wall hole. And then I just use that aluminum foil tape. And then you kind of tape it bit by bit, bit by bit like that to connect, positively connect the box to the hole in the wall outside. So now it's pretty positively connected. So that would help a lot with the airflow. However, the downside is when I have to replace or fix the microwave, I have to remove the box. All that tape there have to be cut. And I wouldn't remember to do that because it's inside there out of the way. So I put a note here, remove top lid, tape inside hole to the exterior hole for better airflow. So I do that so that I remember to remove the lid, cut all that tape out and then remove the box so that I have clearance to remove the microwave. So I think it would be better than just originally the way it was done. It's just push this against the wall and then silicone all the corner here, which I don't think is a good idea anyway. Everything installed here. So Looks pretty good. I already try the vent, the fan. So because I have a positive connection inside, like I mentioned before, there's no air leaks here. You don't feel it. All good here. Yeah. Here they have some holes here because I think they did it like this. So what I'm thinking, because we have shoot gap here, by that uh, expanding core, they call it, like flex, max or something at Home Depot. I'm gonna fog around here, down here a little bit probably. On the edge here, a little bit. Just a little bit. Because I don't want to fight it when I have to remove it. Put this one back. Around a little bit, just like that. But up here, it's all pretty good. There's no air leak. Before, because there was no positive connection, they had to cork all around here. They had to cork all around here, all around here, because the air was just trying to escape everywhere. Because we just push it against the hole, like I mentioned before. Okay. So I'm gonna show you the, the finished product when I'm done walking around it. 
So yeah, uh, so I went to Home Depot and got this one. It's called Dynaflex. I think uh, initially I thought it's Flex Max or something, but Dynaflex works fine too. Seven bucks. So what I did is I cook all around there, even inside. No, you could see brown filling filling in all the gaps and I went ahead and cork around the box as well just to make it look better I suppose it might help with the sealing it all in so improve the airflow so that's how it is now And I think it came, the box, they made this, it doesn't do anything just to cover the hole, see the gap there, I already sealed it, so, the one, so this one, this thing here is just like that. doesn't do anything so I put it in and then maybe cork a little bit more I don't know if I need to do it well just for dust not for the air I think once I put it in Once I put it in, just you know, fill the gap there and there, just for dust, you know, so dust don't get in. But as far as the airflow, I already sealed it all up. So this one is just for look. So I don't know, it's about look because it's inside. I might as well cork, fill in the hole here, the gap, so dust don't get in. All done. Put that piece back in. Just continue with the corking a little bit around it. This is more for dust purposes. So dust don't get in.